What's going on everybody? It's your boy Mr. Always Fishing. Today I'm gonna be doing a video about the install of my new my new unit, uh Garmin Striker 7 SV. And I'm gonna install the transducer on my Ascend 133X right over there. We're finna see how bad we can mess this up. Y'all stay tuned. Let's get this thing hooked on there and let's hopefully get a chance to go out today. Still a lot of daylight left, y'all. Might be able to get something done. Let's go. Now, when you open the box, first thing you're gonna probably see is your transducer. I've already opened this, of course. And um, this is the screen that comes on your transducer. Keep all the stuff off of, you know, how new stuff look. And this is the unit right here. It's a seven inch screen and it's beautiful. We're finna mount this thing on my SN 133X kayak. I've already got this stuff um, already on the little mount it comes with i've already got that set up so i'm gonna just place that there just wanted to show y'all what comes in the box it comes with a lot of instruction manuals and, it, and all types of guides and a quick start and a whole thing about the transducer and how to mount that so what i'm thinking is i've already got the transducer how i think i'm gonna have it on my, oh my goodness how i'm gonna think i'm gonna have it on my kayak so I already got this set up. So this is the transom mount that it comes with. It says it's for transoms, but on the bottom of my SM 133X, there's a there's a plate there made for a transducer for a depth finder like this. So I'm thinking if I can mount it like mount it with the screws that it comes with the mount for a transducer on the, like the back of a boat, like the transom. I'm thinking I can mount it just like that and it'll sit just like that and we'll be good. So I'm gonna give this a try and see how it looks. And then, um, yeah, we finna, finna see how that don't go on. So this is what I meant about the little piece of black thing they had on here. I think this is literally meant for, you know, mounting your transducer in there. So I'm gonna see what's going on with that and see if I can just get it straight mounted on there. First, I'm gonna just sit here and eyeball it how, how it would even look type thing, you know what I mean? I think that's i think that's good you know what i'm saying i think that's all right all right y'all i think i have the transducer mounted on there decent we're gonna see <laughs> it's my first time so i'm gonna let y'all know how this works because y'all will see it with me so yeah let's do it so now that i got the transducer mounted i got the cable fed through the scuffle hole that's conveniently located right there as well it's time for me to flip this thing over i'm not really worried about it scrubbing because it's got clearance it's got some clearance now, what's killing me is I'm not sure if this is the correct way it should be mounted or should be flipped, but I'm gonna find the hell out. <laughs> Let's all learn this, man. Let's go. I'm gonna drill a bigger hole through here with this thing right here, with this bit right here, and get this fed through there all the way up so we can be, uh, so we can have a scupper hole there so it don't have water coming all in my boat. But uh, yeah, let's do it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount it on top of this uh, latch right here um i can do without this latch and, and to be honest with you and i prefer to drill into that latch than my actual kayak because i don't like drilling holes in this at all it's already flimsy enough as it is i really think they should have made this plastic a lot more stronger so yeah i'm gonna i put some silicone on the end of this screw and i'm going to place it right here I'm just gonna drill a hole right in here. Screw it. I mean, I can I can afford to buy another freaking latch if I ever need to. But I can't afford to buy another dang kayak. <laughs> so that's one screw down. I'll add more whenever I um see how this actually works when I get on the water and I'll go from there because honestly I'm just trying something out one thing about having your own kayak is you can do it whatever way you like to do it because it's yours so yeah I like I'm doing it the way I want to do it if you don't like the way I do it then don't mind this
that that's mounted that way this is like the quick release part of it so whenever i want to get on and off the water and i'm going somewhere i can just take my unit right off quick you know what i mean and just go about it like that i don't need this thing to turn at all i don't need any of that i just adjust the position of how like you know what I'm saying when I get in my seat, I'm gonna adjust how it looks and stuff. Other than that, it's pretty much good right there. And I drilled into something that costs like 20 30 bucks instead of my expensive thousand something plus dollar kayak. So, yeah, that's just my way of doing it. Y'all don't have to do it that way, but this is how it's gonna look. And if I ever need to actually use the hatch, probably no problem. I could just probably do it like that, but I'm not planning on using that hatch at all. So, yeah. Now this is the part I don't understand about why they did this in Garmin. Like they gave me this, and this is for my like battery terminals, but they didn't give me a single end for them. So I'm gonna rig something up and see if I can make it happen. I'm about to, I think that might be enough. I might not have to splice it. But yeah, I'm just gonna um straight up put this wire in here heat shrink it and um that's gonna be my battery terminal so i'm just hoping that nothing happens crazy and yeah so like a dummy i just got the i just got the ones that they're, they're too damn small they're too small for the uh end so wow dang it man all right y'all this is day two of the freaking fish finder install i know exactly what i did wrong yesterday i had the complete wrong terminals for the battery and this power cord right here. I had the blue ones and the blue ones were for a bigger gauge wire. These are for 22 to 18 gauge wire and that falls in within the category. This stuff right here is there. So, and I also ordered a battery from um, Amazon and it's gonna be a battery small enough to go in here. So I'm actually just gonna, oh my goodness, there's a lot of mosquitoes. That's why I have a long sleeve on got them um yeah so i'm just gonna run all the power for my fish finder and it should be right it's gonna be right inside of here so i'm gonna run another hole through here and i'm gonna run that transducer cable through the hole up there come feed it back this way and it's gonna all come through here so that's my idea that's my plan how to do it so yeah we're finna get started so First, I'm gonna put these connectors on here because I gotta get revenge from yesterday. I just got the black one uh, stripped off. So now I'm gonna show y'all how to do it for the red one, the hot wire. I mean, not the hot wire, the, the other wire. So, and I found out it's a 20 gauge. So, put it right in that the correct gauge. And you just clamp down, slide it right off. Easy as that. And then, what you do is you do give it some good twist to try to get that thing to be a little stronger so it don't flake all over the place the wire will be like spreading all over the place if you don't give it a good twist up here i use my fingers to do it never do this when you got it actually hooked up to any power or something like that never do it like that just do it when it's completely not connected to nothing by the way that's pretty self-explanatory though so yeah, it should look like that. And then we're just about to put these little connectors right here on the ends of these, all of the day. All right, we're trying to beat the rain now. <laughs> this is Florida. But uh, I successfully snaked it through. I'm gonna put a hole up there to run it through. And now all we gotta do is feed this through nicely very nice very nice there we go transducer fed through boom okay let's unsnake this thing okay Ooh, boy it's hot and it's not even sunny out right now that's crazy but this is a lot of extra transducer wire I think, I don't think that's enough for play for it I'm just gonna wrap it wrap all the extra wrap it up real nice 
and I'm gonna electrical tape it just for the time being. I don't got no zip ties. And I'm gonna set it in there for the time being. But this is right here is like the hardest part of doing it. So I got that out the way. No more snaking involved now. So now I should just be plug and play time. I may have to drill another hole course through this but that's easy where my electrical tape back there we go there we go Boom. sample sample it's gonna lay in there like that of course I gotta put my thing back in there but Sample, easy day. I'll put that there for just for now, temporarily. Lid still functions, lid still good. Yeah. And they also have this little piece right here that snaps on there and make sure it don't um, unplug on you while you're actually on the water and using it. Pretty nice, thoughtful. So now, can't unplug it. All right, so I have that mounted through. So you can see, I got that set. It's all good to go. Um, transducer coming straight through, then going through my hole I made. It's coming through there. I'll look through here. Got that mounted on there already. And then this is on my wires. I just drilled my hole for my cables to run out of that. So yeah, perfectly put in there. And I'm gonna get a, a little cover for this. Put it on there, silicone around it. Get it mounted on there, and this is what I meant perfectly through there because it's like a little hexagon pattern underneath. I did my best to measure underneath it so I wouldn't hit the weird part of the hexagon. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a hole I'm gonna run these cables from through here. unit unit's gonna be like that and um i have one more cable coming out of there which is gonna be my power cable that's why i made it so big so i could have room to fit all of this stuff out of here so that's gonna always that's gonna also be that's the, that well this part's gonna be in there this part of the cable is gonna be coming out into my unit so i got a hole big enough for three wires to be fed through and have enough little clearance around it for a little mountain to go in between them so that's why i use i want to say it was a a one inch bit so it's like a one inch hole it's perfect enough room so i'm gonna get me a little one inch cover silicone it in there and um mount it in there and then boom i like the way it's coming y'all might be tripping about like why why did he pick this spot right here for his thing to be does he know there's like little mount tracks for for the fish finders and stuff i know what they got out there i just didn't want to do that for one i'm not too fond of how they made these kayaks they're flimsy man look at this bin that's ridiculous they're flimsy um the hole is really prone to cracking i'm i know i'm going to encounter a crack somewhere either from weight being in it or just the plastic being so thin i think they could have made the plastic a lot thicker it would have made the kayak heavier, of course, but who cares? Honestly, people who have these kayaks don't throw them on their roofs like me. They have a trailer for these kayaks. So it doesn't matter at the end of the day how heavy the kayak is. So in all reality, they could have made this plastic a lot more durable and thicker, but they didn't. So I know I'm gonna probably have a crack somewhere along in this area soon, maybe even up there. Um, one thing I'm noticing is the mount up here is very flimsy. Like, look how much this bends. I don't know if y'all can see it, but this whole top part bends. So when you put your heavy trolling motor up here, it's gonna be bending. It's gonna be kicking and bending and flexing. That might go out soon. I don't know. <laughs> but in the meantime, I'm gonna get my enjoyment out of this boat. All right, y'all. This is the setup for the most part. I got my Striker Vivid SV7 SV mount it right on my hatch for just the same 133x i decided to mount it on my hatch because i like 
to not drill holes in my boat when I don't have to drill them directly into the hole of the boat. Only hole I drill directly into the hole is that one up there. I couldn't dodge that. That's where the transducer to come through. We're back to the unit. Another one inch hole right here for three of my wires to come through. Power transducer and two transducer wires, I mean. Coming through the hole, boom. Snaked it through. And y'all, this hatch right here is a lifesaver. It cuts a lot of time out. You just unscrew it and it comes right out. And it gives you hole access and it's also waterproof, watertight. Good seals around it. Um, so if you guys doing a lot of upgrades to your Sim 133X or any kayak, switch your hatches out with this one. I got it off of Amazon. I wouldn't say no more than like 10 bucks. Easy, save the day, and less work, less screws you gotta worry about. But anyways, I mounted this whole, this little, little mount that came with the transducer. They gave it to me. I did that for the transducer wire coming through just to keep it a little neater. Right through the hole, and then that's pretty much it. I got my battery coming in tomorrow to power this thing. So next time y'all see me on this channel will be me out here in the water using my Garmin Striker 7SV and probably finding some bluegills or something to catch because I know the bluegills are bedding and I'm going to use the side view to find some beds. So that should be some pretty cool content coming y'all way. So we got something to look forward to on this channel. But that's it, guys. That's, that's how she wrote. That's how she looked. Yeah, buddy. If y'all like what y'all see and y'all um, like my idea, let me know. Um, I haven't really seen anybody else mount it on the hatch. <laughs> think I might be the first one. If I'm not, who cares? I think the hatch is smart because I don't like drilling holes in my kayak if I don't have to. And uh, I know they got the little rail mounts for the fish finder, but that's even more complicated because I got to worry about wires coming from wherever I got my battery located to the fish finder and that's all in the boat so i figured right here will be less wires as possible in my actual boat on the deck so that's smarter for me so that's what i did so. if you like these type of videos and you like this channel and you like what i'm bringing y'all give this video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button this your boy mr always fishing and i'm gonna be out next time i see y'all we're gonna be on the water peace